Hey, gals and guys, this is Christopher Moyer from MyMediaHelper.com. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever it is you may uh, celebrate this time of year. Um, it's kind of an unusual video because I wasn't really sure what the title was going to be. And really, this has got a kind of a mishmash of different things. Uh, basically, my first thought was, okay, we're going to learn how to trade out a router um, from an existing router to a new router. And I was going, do I even need to make this video? I mean, isn't there enough outlets out there? Even your cable company will help you when they come and set it up. Uh, but what if you have to do it yourself? But isn't there enough tutorials out there for that? And then I thought, well, maybe I can put a new spin on it. I'm going to talk about cable a little bit. I used to work for Time Warner Cable. Um, it's now Spectrum, which is owned by Charter One now, I do believe. And if there's any cable technicians out there, I'm not a cable technician. Never, I never was. Um, I worked inside. I worked in the knock, and I worked at customer service. So if I'm saying things incorrectly, please down in the comments um, correct me. Um, so once upon a time, let's go back to the '80s. Let's say um, you had an analog signal that would come into your home to supply channels, and uh, cable companies have been around that long since the 70s I'm pretty sure I don't think before that um, so basically what they would do before digital technology is come out and untrap your line so so they would do that out in the pole mostly um, I don't think there were were there peds around in the 70s I'm not really sure so those peds are those things in your lawn they're usually green boxes you open them up and you can un trap or untrap the cable so you get the signal and then they run the coaxial cable from your box into your home and then you're allowed to have have signal. Um, so once upon a time, you used to be able to hook up as many TVs as you wanted to coaxial cables. So you had one line running into the home and then you could supply as many TVs as you wanted because it was an analog signal and it would um, your TVs just automatically once the coaxial cable was plugged in to the back of your TV and it just it just showed you whatever channels now it's all digital and I don't believe analog even exists anymore I think you need a converter no matter how many TVs that you plug in so I don't think because there is cable TV over there I don't think if you plug in if you bypass a box um, if you don't if you either didn't buy some type of converter from the store which I do believe is okay um, or if you had one supplied by your cable company you won't get anything because even um, right, even your signal from um, outside coming in, if you have like an antenna, uh, even that's all HD now. And um, well, it's not. I don't think if you would you classify it as digital, it wouldn't be a digital signal, would it? Again, I'm not a technician, and so I'm not smart enough to to tell you yes or no. But uh, basically, I wanted to tell you how that works. So once upon a time, a technician would have to come to your home and untrap. Uh, out on the pole, right? On trap so the signal gets to your home. Um, if you wanted HBO, if you wanted Cinemax, whatever premium station, they would have to put a special trap on there, right? So if you just have regular cable, you have a specific trap. Okay, I want to get HBO. So they had to come out and put a trap on there in order for you to get the signal from HBO. So that was a million years ago when I did work at the cable company. Nowadays, I don't even think they do that. I think it's all um, internal now and they just flip a switch. Uh, I know as far as when I worked there, there were still trapping involved, just not as much. I think they were untrapping everything at that point, and then you needed some type of converter, and you needed some type of modem and uh, router in order to, it has to be on a Time Warner or a Spectrum account um, in order for it to work. The piece of equipment had to be on their system in order for it to work, right? So uh, it used to be, and I think it still is, you can go out and get your own modem. Uh, you can go out and get your own router, go to Walmart or whatever, um, and set that up. And then you have to contact your, your cable company and give them, I'm not really sure how they put it in as far as the system is concerned, um, but that's, they. I don't know if they use the serial number or how that goes about, but uh, I'm pretty confident you can still do that. Again, check with your cable company and your provider, your internet provider, to see if that's that's possible. I'm pretty confident it is in all cases. So come here today, what we have is, so we used to have what's called um, O1s and O1 accounts or O2 accounts. So what those were, you had your main account, so you had your home, okay? And once the internet was introduced, um, you there might be a party in the home that just wanted strictly cable, in their own internet and then there might be a secondary party in the home because it's not 
technically two residences. It's just one, but if you had like a grandparent living there or a kid that wanted his own internet or, or me who doesn't know where the hell they need to be at this point in life. Um, so it would, it would, you would get an O one account or an O two account or an O three account. It'd just be the, the point is you'd have two separate accounts, one for your, for your cable, your internet, the other for your internet, or I think you could have, don't quote me, I think you could have two internets, one internet here, one internet there. I'm not sure if that was the case or not. I think mostly what I dealt with was, okay, one account had cable, the other account had um, had internet. So you could get two different billings, and that's where the situation I am right now. So what they do now, they don't do the O1 one accounts anymore. I'm not sure what the billing system is anymore because I worked with ICOMS, which was a Time Warner billing system. Time Warner, long gone. <laughs> Time Warner cable, long gone. Now it's Spectrum. Who knows what their billing system is? I don't work for Spectrum. Um, so now what they do is um, they split it off to accounts. So there's the main house. It's not apartments. Um, it's not a second, it's not a two family household. It's one house, but it has to be, um, it has to be used as a two person because I'm paying for my own internet. It's I'm my own person. I'm my own entity. I don't belong technically to the household, right? I don't pay the mortgage and everything. Um, so then they have this thing. So this is a splitter. I mean, splitters have been around for, for, a long time, right? You put a piece of cable in and then you split one into one TV and split one into the other. Now this is meant for um, two households. So I think what they do is they I, they don't base it on the splitter. I just think this is just a splitter, a regular splitter. I think they base it on the equipment. Um, and I could have done this myself. I'm not understanding why I had to spend $60 on someone to come out and do this. <laughs> But they did. Um, so I had a I had a modem which is over there, and all right, here's a router. Um, yep, here's the router. So I had that in an apartment. That was my old apartment. So I hooked that stuff in my apartment when I was there a year ago, um, and then I broke my ankle, and then I brought the equipment here. Uh, never had to use the modem. My mom has a modem here that I use uh, for her digital phone. So I just tapped in to her uh, modem, right? And I just use the router, which is on a, an account that is at another address that I don't live at anymore. But until just recently, um, I'm thinking the people that live where I used to live just got cable because they're asking for the equipment now, all of a sudden, like a year later, uh, because I don't live there anymore. The equipment's resting on an account at the old address. It doesn't matter where the hell you are. Um, you can bring it anywhere and it will work. You're not really supposed to. I was paying the bill, so it's not like I was getting away with anything. So I bypassed my old modem and I hooked the router up to this modem. This is a phone. This is for a phone. It's, I mean, it's a regular modem. You can use it for internet, but it's just not being used for internet. So this is a uh, modem for the phone. This is the router I'm using right now. And then this is what the technician brought out me, a new modem. So I don't... I don't know why they had to change out the modem for a new modem when I already have a modem. I'm not sure what the logistics are behind that or why. Maybe someone that works at the cable company can tell me the logic behind that. I just don't simply know. Um, why don't you just use... It was Spectrum at the time. I got your service. Why don't you use the old modem? <laughs> it's Spectrum now. Just hook in that modem, um, transfer over the router to my new account, and we'll be clear, right? It didn't work that way. It was ridiculous. It's weird. So I don't know. I'm sure there's a background reason why why that had to be done. And I just don't, I can't understand it or explain it. So what I want to do now, and usually on your modem and your router for your cable company, the information, the password and uh, for to get into your account is going to be right on the back of the router if you're not aware of the router. So this is a router. This is a modem. What's the difference between the two? This, um, this takes in the signal coming into the home. Um, so I can direct connect and put this into my computer by coaxial cable, which is um, this right here. Coaxial cable, if you can see it. So this is coaxial cable, right? So um, I could just direct, I could pull this out and put that right into my computer and it would work. Now, obviously with a router, it routes, right? It, it routes to different devices. So um, you can use more than one device with a router and it's all wireless, obviously, right? 
All right, so let's start with this. So this is the router that's existing in this modem. The modem's staying there to the simple fact that's just for the phone, so I don't even need that. So the only way it's connected to, to the uh, modem is through uh, Ethernet cable. This is your Ethernet cable, so I'm just pulling it out. I don't need that anymore, and all that is the power plug. Don't need that anymore either. So now um, my computer's dead uh, as far as the Internet's concerned. Um, because we don't have an uh, internet signal anymore. <clears throat> so we'll go to our new modem. And as I showed you, here's the... Let's see if I can, can't pull this up. Here's the splitter. So the splitter comes in. Um, this white cable comes in here. And then this... Like they've got this split into this modem. This is the modem I'll be using. And then this black cable, if you can see it. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not. It doesn't really matter. That goes into the existing modem there, which I'm not going to touch because that's for the phone, and um, I have nothing to deal with do with that. All right, so the white that comes in, I mean, there's only one place to put it. There's only <laughs> one one coaxial uh, outlet or piece or bit or whatever you want to call it there. Um, there's only one place to put the Ethernet cord. It's right there. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? And then the power cord. There's only one place to put the power cord. Um, that's all you have to deal with. There's voice jacks here. I don't know why you would want them. I guess if you have a landline, I'm not sure. I mean, technically this is a landline that we have. It's VoIP. It's voice over IP. I don't know if anyone has true landline anymore. Um, I'd be surprised if probably, I'm sure there's people that have it, but, um, that's what these are for. You can plug in your phone if need be. Um, I'm not going to go there cause I don't have an example for you. Okay. So this ethernet cable, right? So this is your modem. So you've plugged in this from your cable, from your line coming in. You've plugged this in your Ethernet, which you can direct connect. You can put this Ethernet into your computer and it will work, but we're not going to do that. We don't have one computer. We have multiple devices we want to use, right? We want to have wireless. So we're going to put it into what's called a router, which I'm sure most of you are aware the router is going to route the signal to different devices around your home, right? Wireless. And then, of course, the plug, you want to plug that into the power so it has juice, right? Um, yeah, AC power has been around for a few, few couple of years, so I'm sure I'm all confident that you know how to plug things into a wall socket. <laughs> okay, so here's your router. Okay, sorry. Again, with your router, you're going to have a power plug. You just put it into another outlet. Get yourself a, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Get yourself a power pack or... Um, an outlet, you know, a power thing um, that will hopefully has a breaker in it. So if it oversurges, it will break off. It will shut off and not damage any of your equipment with any type of surge. Uh, a power strip. That's what I'm trying to think. That's why I'm old. I'm, <laughs> I'm old and ancient. All right. So from the modem to the router, okay, is your Ethernet. Okay. And then that's your power. All right. And then what we're going to do... All right, so you got everything hooked up, all hunky-dory, and obviously you want lights on these things. You don't want any flashing lights. They should be uh, blue, and I think uh, the data light might uh, flicker if it's trying to get a signal. I don't see it flickering on there. Uh, it depends on the, on the router, really, but don't worry about that. So the next thing you want to do is sign in. So there's, there's a few ways you can do it. There's usually a, a this is a Windows 11, so you'll see an icon down there. You can just click on that, and it should give you a list of um, wife, the, the signals that it's picking up uh, in your home and across um, your neighborhood there as far as it can reach. And yours is usually going to be the first one. So, And then you're going to um, put in your login, your, your username, and then your key or your password. And just look at the back of your router, not your modem, but your router. And for Spectrum, it's right on the back. I'm thinking for like, um, what else do we have? Uh, Comtech, Comtech, is Comtech out there? Something, like, there's a bunch of them out there, but um, I'm sure it's all um, the same, no matter what major company you have. Uh, the information should be on the back of the router. So obviously I've already connected or I wouldn't be able to shoot this video. So then uh, we'll just do any, we'll do Donna Swift here and uh, we'll go connect. And then um, you'll want the username. 
it's not asking for the username because there's already one in there, but initially it will. And then the network security key, which will be back on the router. Now you can change the names of, of your network. Um, for Spectrum's case, there's an address on the back of their router to where you can go and you can go here and then you just get the Spectrum app. But if it goes to my phone, I'm not going to continue, but um, you should be able to sign up on your phone. I'm not sure why you wouldn't be able to do it on your account online or yeah, online, uh, perhaps you could, but there is a way to do it. No internet. So it says no internet yet. I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> so weird. Yeah, it's right here. Connecting. Okay. All right. So the reason that um, I was disconnected is to the fact that um, that's got a supply because I noticed when I pulled um, the router power cable out of the router that was here and put it in the bag to be returned to Spectrum, it was still lit. So I think that has a, re uh, a char I think the charge lasts for a little bit. So that's why I'm still be able to record while it said. Um, that I was not online. So that's news to me. I didn't know that was possible. So I just learned something along with you folks. Now, where the hell am I? I lost my train of thought now that I learned that. Oh, yeah. So we're back to here. And then we can create a username. And then it's just going to be uh, confirm your account. And I'll go from here. Just follow the instructions. Mine's going to be my media helper, as always. And that's going to be uh, that will pop up once I go through all this stuff. And I will know exactly who I am. It's always good to know who you are. And uh, I think you as always, please subscribe to the channel. I'm not sure if this is going to help anybody or not. Um, kind of a hodgepodge of knowledge I'm throwing at you. I don't know. I guess any any information is good information, I suppose. Um, so please subscribe and like and um, please share if need be and hit the bell for updates and ho, ho, ho and ha, ha, ha and he, he, he. And uh, I'll catch you very soon. I got a bunch of uh, how-to videos I'm going to do along with a bunch of Christmas stuff. So we'll just keep, uh, stay the course. Isn't that what George Bush, second George Bush there said all the time? Stay the course. So uh, <coughs> that's what we'll do. All right, kids. I'll catch you later.